Are you a lifelong fan of General Hospital? Are you a new fan who wants to know more about the history of the show? Do you enjoy talking about the show with others? Do you find yourself yelling at the TV? Is your self-care an hour a day in Port Charles? If so, we invite you to join hosts Amanda Kimmel and Shannon Coach at the place where all the hidden conversations take place and secrets are revealed. Meet us at Pier 54, a General Hospital fan podcast. Hello. Hi. Welcome to the General Hospital recap for, so last week I totally messed up the dates. And I didn't catch you, apparently. Nope. And I didn't catch it in editing either. Oh, wow. I could have at least gone back and sometimes I splice things up. I said it was, maybe it was two weeks ago. I don't even know. What is today? No, no, no. It was last week. I think I said like the 23rd through the 25th, but no, I didn't. I, anyway, last week I messed up the dates. This week is November 30th through December 4th. Yes. That I am confident in. Yes. yes. <laughs> because you had a birthday this week. Well, you oh, didn't have a birthday yes. this week. A child had a birthday this week. Exactly. Yay. So just a couple of quick things. I know that there have been some people that have reached out and thank you so, so much. So we did a platform change, which has gone well. But as with all changes, there's some kinks that need worked out. Mm -hmm. And I guess it wasn't carrying through to Spotify, but now we're good because somebody let us know. So thank you. Still working on the website. So that will be changing over. But for the meantime, you can still go to, it'll stay pier54podcast.com, but I'll just be redirecting it. But that's a whole other thing. Anyway, you can still go to pier54podcast.com to fill out the fan spotlight form that uh, we talked about. Or if there's, maybe we need to put like a 411 subject. Oh, that's a suggestion. Idea. Yes. Yeah. Because I know we've had some people who have tweeted us, tagging other people, saying like, you should talk to this person. Right. And sure, you know, we'll talk to them. So. Exactly. We are not turning down interviews. No, we haven't been either. Right. I mean, we have we have one coming up this week that is super exciting. So excited. But this week's Port Charles, for, so last week we did Amanda Baker, who yes. was Jolene on Night Shift. And that was, she's so sweet. She is so sweet. And this week, we're doing the Port Charles 411 about Stone, because he was in both, obviously, Robin's Diary. Yes. And a major point in Karen, Mm -hmm. and something that the show has kind of dropped the ball on this year. Right. It seems like the fans keep bringing it up. It's been 25 years since Stone passed away, and bad on us for not, we knew it. Right. But I don't feel like we thought it was a big deal, because it didn't seem like anyone else was making a big deal, and now it's all over... Because it would Twitter, have been, Instagram, everything. it was last Sunday. Yes. It was November 29th is when Stone Cates passed away. So we are going to be recapping his character yes. on this week's Yay. 411. And we would have done last week, but we had already scheduled out the Amanda interview. So I think that's all the updates that I have. Okay. Yeah. So this week we're doing something different. We're going to draw some subjects out of a bowl so that we know what direction we're going in. I don't know that it's going to work out any well, better than normal, but we'll see. No, because, and I know that I give you grief about this, but sometimes I feel like I do a lot more talking. And I know that you don't feel that way, so that's okay. But when I'm <laughs> exactly. listening back, but when I'm listening back, I'm like, I feel like it depends on the topic. It some, does. Some podcasts are way more you and some are way more me and that's fine. So, okay. we're good. So, All right. Do you want me to I know go that first you're then? Good with it, I'm fine. Yes. And I'm sure everyone else is too. I get my point across. But I will start just so that you can. Oh, this is a good one. Ava and Nicholas. I loved them this week. They're married for reals now. Loved them. He was so sweet. And appropriately pissed off or mad, whatever, whenever she said, oh, yeah, I hid him here, but I didn't really mean to hide him here because I didn't know. Right. And she all didn't of that. Know all the details. She knew that he was in trouble, but not. Right. How bad. Exactly. And when she was explaining it, she didn't step back and try to make excuses or make it sound like she was just telling him what he wanted to hear or whatever. She, matter of fact, I didn't know as soon as I did know. Then I said, you have to leave and I was going to kill him and blah, blah, blah. Do (sighs) you think she would have done it? I don't know. Are we now going to Ava and Julian? All right. See, this is part of the problem. (laughs) But that's okay. Well, no, because that's another, that's in there. Okay. So this is why we'll also be jumping around. <laughs> See, this is why I'm sure, not sure this idea is going to work, is because we jump into another thing easily. But we're going to see how it goes. But yeah, I loved, I loved them. Yeah. I like, loved it. It was perfect. It, it was the chemistry we have all been missing from any characters. This is and how they were, were awesome. before he left, 
And right. that's when Tyler Christopher left. Yes. And to be fair, I mean, I feel like Marcus Coloma is really, yes, I've liked him from the beginning. I know that you have trouble adjusting to change and everything, but I think that you're on. He did awesome this week. I didn't like that Ava kept saying she thought about it and he's her only family. I literally yelled at the TV, how about Avery? You have other family. And I know it's not the same because that's relationship adult-wise and kid-wise. But at the same time, she kind of made it a little desperate of like, you're all that I have. No, no, that's not true. You have your business and you have kind of sort of friends and you have kids. So it shouldn't all be about Nicholas. But I'm glad that they finally... Made it official, official. Yes. So cute. All right. Let's Go ahead. see what the you next pick. one is. Shake it up. All things Julian. I could not <laughs> plan that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Good draw. Yes. Hey, okay, so all things Julian. Okay. Where are you starting with that one? I was getting really upset that they were kind of implying that he was going to kill himself voluntarily. Yes. Because he would not. And no. Mm-mm. Him doing that jump was good. Yes. But him, I was getting, you're on my page. Right. I was getting the impression that they were maybe going to have, I thought at one point Ava was going to give him the gun to do uh, it. Ah, there you go. And I was like, no, Julian would not do that. No. And the whole reason he jumped is because apparently, Sonny and Jason. Apparently that's a fall that everyone makes, so he knew his chances were pretty good. How did Jason not see him when he was traveling around, or when he was, we searched the entire, who's we? Right, of all. right. But anyway. Yep. <laughs> Maybe there was other bodyguards that stayed outside. I don't know. That doesn't even make any sense. But yes, they searched the entire area and nobody saw Julian. Right. On a very green, lush, well-lit yeah. area. A black figure. <laughs> yep. Nope. Just didn't see him. Sorry. I did love on Twitter, William DeVry is killing it. I love him. I mean, he's always been so, so good. But everyone's making fun. And he's like, so who thinks, who knows where Julian went? And everyone's like, the Pennsylvania side of the river. (laughs) (laughs) So it's not just us. It's not just us. And then I was surprised that Martin Gray just kind of let him go. Well, first of all, I thought it was hysterical when he maced him. Yes. (laughs) Yes. And he did it so nonchalantly. He's on the phone. La, la, la. Oh, the blinds are a little messed up. And then all of a sudden, I'm spraying you with pepper spray. Sorry. (laughs) So I took my notes a little bit differently this week. For whatever reason, I think it was Monday I was doing some work, so I already had my computer pulled up oh, as I was watching, so I just typed wow. them all. I know, now just, I got fancy. I was going to say, it looked a little more organized, and I'm like, mm, I have my half And then I notes. just stuck with it, just because. You're a nerd? Yep. <laughs> and so I wrote, I bet Martin also has a gun in the safe, dot, 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 and he sure thought about us thinking that. Yes. Because I was definitely expecting him oh, to turn around. and 100%. I wanted them to show us that picture, though. I know. What is it? I don't know. But I wanted to see it. Because what could Julian have on him? I don't know either. No, it has to be a connection Maybe between him, him, and him and Cyrus and some someone else. I think it's going to tie into the whole Laura storyline. Oh. The, the last name Martin that Cyrus is hiding. Gray. Gray. Yeah, what the heck? Sorry. I, I knew <laughs> what you were saying. So I did not put that on a sticky. But do we want to just go into that? Sure. Because it's kind of... Mm. Whenever you want to. All right, we'll just go into it because I don't know how I did not that in there. So I wrote down, David Gray was the cult leader that kidnapped Laura Templeton. Why didn't we connect that Martin Gray might be connected to him when we did our 411? Because we had Martin Gray at the time. It was kind of like the... But he was such a side baby character. I don't think we were making connections. But also, they spell Gray differently. And we had a whole discussion about this on... Oh, I think it was on Instagram. Okay. We'll see then. Look at us knowing what we were doing, even though we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah, sure. <laughs> that happens a lot in my life. <laughs> so it was another one of my favorite Instagram accounts, Prince Tupac fan forever. Or no, it was Chris M. Brennan. But I think we had we had quite the discussion about this. Okay. So Chris M. Brennan said, that was awesome. I'm waiting for the reality to sink in when she realizes that Martin and Cyrus are either related to each other or Martin is actually the one calling the shots on the drugs and whatever devious plans are going down. I'm even going as far as saying Martin has Polly. Wow. And I said there was an epiphany that I made yesterday for sure. We had done the 411 about Jackie Templeton and learned that her sister was held by cult leader David Gray. Don't know why we didn't think he could be related. And now throwing in Cyrus is just adding to the layers. And then Prince Tupac 
Sam Forever said Laura's DNA father's name is Gordon Gray, but Martin Gray, so Gordon Gray is G-R-E-Y. Martin Gray is G-R-A-Y. Okay. And so it just keeps going. It, there's just like a whole conversation about it. And I even said, I was like, so many spellings of Gray. Couldn't they have at least picked a different name? Didn't even think about the spelling difference. But then, you know, people change the spellings of their last names to not be associated. So who knows? Who knows? Too many Grays. Too many Grays. Many shades of Gray. There you go. That was a good monkey song, too. Okay. Yeah. It is. Hi, Cookie. Again, you're uh, expecting me to know something about music, and I don't, so we're just going to move past that. Okay. I was on the Facebook pages, Mm -hmm. and Lynn Hansen in the Anything and Everything General Hospital page said that she thinks that they are both half-siblings, Cyrus and Martin, both half-siblings to Laura, (gasps) and that it may change their mind about destroying Gigi and Laura's family. Well, I thought that Cyrus was legit concerned about Lulu. I got the same vibe from him that I did when Jordan was in the hospital. When he was... Cookie, I'm sorry. (laughs) She just wants to give her opinion and you're (laughs) pushing her out of the way. I know. So, anyway, yeah, she went through what you basically just said. This person's this and how they're all connected. But her ending statement was that... So, today, Curtis says the name of the person Cyrus has been hiding. Florence Gray which is Gordon's wife. Also yes. today we see that Cyrus and Martin are more than passing acquaintances, especially when Martin says, when have you ever known me to wait until I'm called upon? Yeah. So therefore it's my belief that they are trying to get revenge for their mother, Florence, for their dad's affair. This is my theory that they both are half siblings to Laura and that may change their mind about destroying GH and Laura's family. So would they be full brothers then? Or, or, could Cyrus have a different dad? I think because, that would make it more interesting. Because she was so distraught over Gordon having Laura with Leslie. Right. She went and had some, too, and then got Cyrus. There you go. But then who's older, Martin or Cyrus? I don't know, but I am ex- I am now excited about this. I'm now excited to see where the heck It's going. about time. Yeah. They've been around for way too long. Martin and has been make around any sense. way too long. Yeah. For absolutely no reason. Mm-hmm. So good. Thanks for giving him some kind of storyline. Even if that's not what it is, just to connect him around to know what the heck Cyrus is doing. Yeah. You want to pull the next? I was going to say, do you have anything else on that before I no, pull I the next? No, I think that's magic slip of paper. Uh, Sasha. No, I don't want that one. She's on my nerves. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> I think that Sasha and Brando are going to get together and bond over addiction. I think that would be good. So she can quit whining about Michael. <laughs> no, she jumped to that conclusion. But again, my end game is Willow and Chase. So, right, you don't care what happens to Sasha, but I yet you're yelling care. at me no, for I saying I'm over her whining. No, I do care what happens to Sasha. I do. I just thought that what happened with Brando I still was don't really think good. that Willow and Chase are going to be together, which I'm sure is one of your cards, so we can get to that. Yep. But I was just annoyed with Sasha. She still didn't admit what had happened. She, oh, no, I just had a heart attack. No, you didn't. You're 20-something. You didn't have a heart attack all of a sudden. Everyone knows that, so why are you denying it? So just a quick correction on that, though. 20-somethings can't have heart attacks, even if they're perfectly healthy. That's a whole other subject. I was going to say, yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. But you do have, It's is it uncommon? Absolutely. Exactly. But exactly. it is possible, and you do need to listen to your body. But, right, but again, okay. listen to your... We know she was doing coke. Yes, so. listen to your body, which is going to lead you to go get some type of diagnosis, which will then explain why you were at risk to have a heart attack, or if you have one... They're then running tests, and they find out something that's wrong with you. Right. You are not truly perfectly healthy and then have a heart attack. Right. So, yeah. But, and, and again, the whole world knew she was doing drugs, so just admit it. They're trying to help you, whatever. Yeah. But it's like you said, you know, with Alexis, we've at least seen her doing other things. Now the only thing, was it us or was it, I don't even remember who said this. I think that it might have been when we were on that other show. And someone was like, yeah, but with Alexis, you at least see the, her other life. Right. But with Sasha, we don't really get to see anything except for her being on drugs. So it's kind of difficult to. Right. They put her in one storyline and she's stuck in that box. Even yeah. whenever she was with Michael, you only saw Sasha and Michael. She didn't do anything really outside of that. Like right. she was starting into deception, but that was like. At the very she end. She moved from that relationship to now she's all about deception and now, before that, she was just on to drugs. Right. Yeah. She's, I think the actress is capable of way more than just that. Heck yeah. So they need to give her more. 
But it doesn't need to be sitting around whining about Michael and hoping that he was sitting there because he cares. I did like Nina with her, too. Yes. So that's nice to see that Nina might be healing from Mm -hmm. everything. That Yep. Okay. You want to draw another thing? Because I feel like we were ready to go off onto another subject, but it's probably in the bucket. Lulu! This is actually going really well. (laughs) I loved Charlotte with Lulu. That's where I was just about ready to go. And then I was like, no, I can't. Because no, we can go. And I'm sorry, she's a little lady now. Yes. She's not a little girl. She's a little lady. Yeah. It's quarantine's making these kids grow. Exactly. But no, she was perfect. The lines they gave her were perfect. The way she delivered them were perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. I still think they should have done something with Rocco. I understand that for whatever reason, maybe he couldn't be on set. But again, we have FaceTime people. We have Zoom. We have even just, uh, say, I talked to Rocco and right. he said to say something. Right. Don't ignore the fact that the kid exists. Or have someone say, oh, Rocco just left. Or have like Olivia right. leaving or just coming back. I just brought something. Exactly. exactly. You could have showed Olivia, just Olivia's back in the elevator like she was ushering the kids or a right. kid into the elevator and you wouldn't have had to know that he wasn't actually there. Right. Something. Because it does not make any sense that you're sending her away for how long or she may even die and you're not taking him to see her. Absolutely. Ridiculous. Speaking of her potentially dying, I said, well, now there's a storm. Bet you the power goes out and that's how Lulu dies. But it did not. It did not. She made it. Because I said, and no generators. She made it to not Paris. She did make it to not Paris. She's just going to Manhattan. Right. Guys. I was disappointed. It's Manhattan. I really. Why are we acting like we're never going to go visit her? Exactly. But I really wanted them to say Paris just so we could laugh about it. And I said, oh, showing baby moments is never a good sign. I'm sorry. Well, but they, they didn't did. kill her. No, they didn't kill her. But oh, yeah. That... and Laura talking about her at the end of the episode about how she'll be back. Yes. That was nice. It was that nice. That was very nice. And I hope it's definitely true. And I said, so on Monday, they talked about Patrick and Griffin were consulting, and no, wait for Lucky. And <laughs> online, Lucas is listed as a trauma surgeon, but then on Tuesday's episode, it says Lucas is a, I think Laura says Lucas is a great neurosurgeon. So Wikipedia, or Wikipages, fandom, whatever, everything says that Lucas is a trauma surgeon, which historically sounds accurate, considering right, because everything why we've would seen you him have do. Patrick there if Lucas could have done everything? Right. But... On Tuesday, Laura said that she knows he's a talented neurosurgeon. Yes. So. Yes, I know what she said. I, I guess think we. Maybe that's where he was for those couple months. Yes. He was getting, he was getting a whole his new, new, new degree. For that. I want to go to whatever college they go to because they get their new certifications really fast. I know. And last week we talked about would Lulu have changed her next of kin and she sure did. Yes. It was Laura. Yes. I'm really enjoying this. This is kind of therapeutic. I'm just like oh crossing my. out my. You know, if they spent a little bit less money on those fancy brain helmet thingies, <laughs> maybe they could have kept some of these actors. Yes. Those were very fancy. Oh, and I said Tracy came back from Amsterdam quicker than Lois from Australia. And uh-huh. she's still, and she's not even her blood. <gasps> that was. That was. Please tell me that you at least missed it up. That was a very good scene. <laughs> I love how they co-mom. Yes. Yeah. Because somebody on. There was, like, a conversation on Inst- or Twitter about this, too. It was, how is Tracy attached to Lulu? And I have a feeling that they... But if they didn't watch the show when Tracy was married to Luke and Laura was in a coma, they wouldn't have known our catatonic state. Is right. there a difference between... I'm sure that there is. I'm sure there is because they specify but, it. So Right. But there was a huge difference because Tracy was basically her mom. But if it had been right. a more common stepmother... Right. Type relationship, they probably wouldn't be as... Right, exactly. As bonded, but... I'm assuming the difference is coma, you're laying there with no motion at all, but catatonic state. Remember, they would show Laura in the rocking chair. Yeah, and, and like, she could, she, like, get up and brush her hair and stuff. Right, so it was, like, mentally she wasn't there, but physically she could still move about when you're in a coma. I'm assuming it's There's the reverse. Nothing? Okay. I'm, I mean, they say that they can still hear you whenever they're in coma, so I'm assuming that your brain is still awake, but your body is sleeping Yeah, in a very, very basic term. That is quite possible. So, yes, I loved Tracy with Lulu a million years ago, so it was awesome to see that she would come back. And fitting. I like whenever they play it out the way that I feel real life would have gone. Yes, of course Tracy would come back. 
Right. I did think it was crappy that they couldn't get a hold of Luke. I understand if he wasn't going to come home, but same thing. Why was there not a, I just hung up with Luke instead of, oh, I can't reach him. And same thing with Lucky. Right. Come on. I know. Even like an email. If we can't have their voices, they don't want to call in for a phone call or something. I just got this text. I got a telegram. Email or whatever. Right. Anything. Luke sends a telegram. <laughs> sounds appropriate. There you go. Oh, we haven't used that word in a long time. No, we, we haven't. haven't used that word in a long time. You say it a lot more than I do. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> well, and then, so Michael's talking about, you know, when I was in my coma, and I'm like, yeah, you came back a few years older there, dude. Yeah. How fun would it be to get to use those words in everyday life? When I came out of my coma. Right. I think that's all that I have about Lulu. Okay. I am missing some in here. Oh, wait. Is it? I went. You go. I was Lulu. How do I have two and you only have one? My other one's up here. Oh, I was going to say, you're cheating. I had yeah. all things fully in it. She is cheating. I'm not. Thanksgiving. Robert overhearing? Oh, because I had to write a couple. Robert overheard Ned and Alexis saying that oh, they slept together. Oh, like, overhearing and then no singing. That was probably one of the first ones that I wrote because I started to write the sub things. And I was like, oh. but if I do that, then no. Right. You can just write the. Yeah. Well, okay. So that ties in Tracy because Tracy was like, no, first we sing and then we eat. And there was no singing. There was no singing. I was not happy about that. I that understand. is a. That, right, and it strings along the Quartermain legacy into right. all of the holidays. But I will give it to them because that was her entrance in, to, right. and then it ended with Laura. So it would have been super awkward. Right. She's they, like, "Wait a second, let me just sing, and, and then I'll talk to you." <laughs> but yeah, I liked that they brought up that Robert and Alexis were both attorneys, and Alexis was like, "Well, <laughs> I'm not anymore, but he is." Or and then what did she? And then she mocked the fact that they rewrote history. And she's like, well, maybe if I just, you know, go away for a little while and come back, I can have a new career or something, too. You can. You want to be a surgeon? There's an accelerated program, apparently. <laughs> we need a trauma surgeon now, there apparently. There you go. So, <laughs> opening a general hospital. Yeah, I don't know anything else, though. No, I mean, I thought that was pretty it was much nice it. that they all came and it was Thanksgiving. But, I mean, even they said this is a weird Thanksgiving. But yeah. The fact that Olivia's trying to hook up. Right. Robert and Alexis. Oh, come on. That's cute. She's trying to play matchmaker and try. No. We I... know all these other things that she doesn't know. No, I think she's trying to get Robert off the market so she's not tempted. Ooh. I don't think that it was out of the kindness of her heart. Oh, see, I did. I mm -hmm. thought it was Robert's lonely. I mean. Alexis is lonely. I don't think that Olivia does things with malicious intent, so it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to pawn him off or whatever. But I feel like, yeah, there was definitely some... Well, if he's over here, then I can stop thinking about See, him. See, but I feel like they've been done since they came. Like, now that they're done with their adventure, I don't feel the same emotional. Oh, right. I mean, Dante is back, so she doesn't need to cry on his shoulder. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We'll have to see how Ned handles all this Lulu stuff, though. Well, and when, if he finds, she finds out. Right. Oh. She's going to need to cry on somebody's shoulder. Yep. So. Yep, yep, yep. Portia and Jordan. I thought Jordan was going to tell her. I did, too. I do, too. I feel like she needs to. Yeah. 100%. Portia isn't just a bystander anymore. She's helping you with all of your stuff. Right. So, in return, you should let her in on the full story. Well, especially when her daughter is now going to be freaking out, but that's a whole other thing. Right. But, my one problem. One problem. One? Really? Only one? Go ahead. When Portia was saying about how, you know, Jordan wasn't even there when the floating rib exploded and blah, 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 and Jordan's like, yeah, I left the city with a substitute commissioner. As though he's subpar. Right. Yet Mac has been commissioner and a couple I'm times. pretty sure a lot less stuff. No. <laughs> we no. should go through. Different stuff. No, but, but he yeah. was longer. But he at least was on top of it. She just. Right. And there was nothing about the explosion. It doesn't matter who's in charge. That was going to happen. And right. Mac handled it exactly like you would have handled it. Right. So, no. I just didn't like the fact that she called him substitute commissioner yeah. as though it's not like she pulled in some guy off the street right right can you cover just, my desk for a couple hours i have to go or away just like quickly promoted chase right you know or something like that it's it was mac yeah so no yeah i'm with you the one thing that mac can do is be in charge of police stuff right okay are we done with portia and jordan I i'm feel done like i was done before we started oh my God, yeah. <laughs> she was annoying Oh, Sam forgetting Lila. Yeah. And so this was an argument that went back and forth on both Twitter and 
Instagram. And some people were saying, you know, the lines were written wrong because, but it was totally wrong because in order, she said, when I decided to become a mother, and that's where I get really particular because I'm like, but you're yelling at my statement based on something that wasn't said. Right. Because what she said was when she decided to become a mother, Uh she did not decide to get pregnant with baby Lila. However, when she miscarried baby Lila, first of all, it was Sonny's baby. So yes, you were in his world. Yep. And Jason was by your bed. Yep. And you decided to move forward together. Mm Mm-hmm. So everything about you deciding to become a mother coincided with being in Sonny's world. Yep. It's not like she was pregnant with Jax. And exactly. then Jason comforted her. Right. She was all surrounded. Yep. And so like General Hospital 227. Exactly. Baby Lila and Jason. Baby Lila had Jason and Sam the chance. Gave. Sorry. Baby Lila gave Jason and Sam the chance to fall in love. It was just it was just a very, very frustrating thing. And then even, and then she start, starts talking about Patrick. But Danny was around before she started dating Patrick. hmm So the whole thing didn't make sense. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, her whole timeline was wrong. And... I understand you make decisions, you get older, and you reflect on those decisions, whether it's relationships or parenting or anything, but you can't just change your whole life around. Like, this was a sudden... And Jason actively tried to have kids. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to just cut you you're No, you're exactly right. It was not a oops. It was a planned thing they wanted to do, and there was multiple times that she said she was leaving, she could have left. He was gone for how long... And she had turned her life around to a different style. She could have stayed there. She chose to keep coming back. Right. You don't now get to be like, oh, geez, how'd I end up here? You chose to be there multiple right. times with multiple people. Yes. Yes. They really need to figure out what they're doing because it's annoying. It's it's too much limbo. Yeah. And it's making Sam look dumb. Right. I agree. Ugh. I don't know how Carly didn't slap her. You're just dumb. Stop. Right. Because Carly knows about baby Lila. Carly knows about exactly all those things. No matter which way, even though it was written poorly, no matter which way you cut it, Sam was in Sunny's world when she decided to become a mom. Yep. Because she was a mom before she met Patrick. Yes. Baby Lila came before Patrick, though. And if baby Lila wouldn't have passed away, she would have been a mom before Patrick. So she made the decision that that was the world she was going to be in before Patrick. And again... She left it to be with Patrick, but then she went back to it. And she left it whenever Jason... She left Patrick when Jason came back, but it was Drew Kane. Right. So, she already had Danny. Yeah. Okay. These timelines confuse me. Right. And even with baby Lila, people get pregnant on accident. I am not going to dispute that. But once you find out that you're pregnant, if you decide to keep the child, which is what she was doing, she wasn't giving her up for adoption, then you you're made the decision yeah. to be a mom. Right. And she even says that when I'm, in other conversations, she refers to being a mom to baby Lila. Right. So how are we forgetting that now? For pointless. Like, yeah. Okay. We don't even have to go into it. <laughs> All right. We just don't like Sam this week. Next. Although Alexis told her off pretty good. Yeah. Joss and Trina. They were cute. They're like the new Cagney and Lacey. <laughs> They're like, we're going to go investigate. I liked that Jocelyn go-to answer was, let me talk to my mom and Sunny. Yep. And that would have been the right decision. I understand 17, that's not what you do. But if they would have done that, maybe they would get answers faster than doing whatever they're going to do. That's Trina's plan. Yeah. Can't believe that Cyrus sat down with her and told her, but I am impressed with how she responded. Yeah. You know, she's like, wait, this actually makes sense. Exactly. Good thought process, not just Taking him at his word or not taking him at his word and going through. Yeah, I went for a candy bar and my dad was fine and then he was dead. Right. I liked that they were the ones packing up Dev's room. Yes. I was really worried that they were going to have, as Joss was packing up, find the, the journal. Sheets. Yes. yes. Uh, Even though we knew he threw it away at the hospital, like first drafts or right. something like that. I was really worried about that. Can we not do that? Can we just let this kid just. Yes. He's gone. Just let him be gone. Right. Let's move forward. I love that she gave his bracelet to Brando. Yes. Yeah. That was sweet. Yeah, I feel like all of that was handled appropriately. They weren't over-dramatizing, but they didn't act like, like they did the first day, not the girls, but the other right. people. Oh, Dev died. Okay. <laughs> it was a little more deeper than that. Are we going to have services for him? Because I have not. I bet that it's off screen. 
I hope that they at least do something. I mean, they said they were going to, but I don't think. Right. I think it'll be, like, towards the end of next week, we'll see them at the grave site. Yeah. We're not going to do all of the Well, then who's going to do Dustin's? Well, now Brooklyn has to come back. Okay. She's not ready to come back yet, though. I know. They really poorly timed Dustin dying. Yeah. Unless they're going to try to say that she's pregnant and it is Dustin's, which wouldn't make any sense. None. But they could it's try Valentine's. to screw it up. I agree, but. Yeah, they can't just have her come back in nine months and be like, oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't come back for Dustin's funeral. I agree. But they will, because that's what they do. Mm. I guess that's really all I have that's on it. Dustin's I mean, funeral. they were they were good, but they were just like a blip. There wasn't yeah. much But it was still cute, them. because they're. It was. It was a good friend moment. <laughs> Why is Jeannie Francis so perfect? I'm, I don't think I can answer that question, but <laughs> that's a straight, I put it like a head topic thing, and I was just like, seriously? The woman is amazing. Yeah. That slap. <laughs> and then she instantly started crying. Like, I just needed that release, and it's. Her buildup yeah. as he's talking, the shaking and everything, I'm like. Yeah. It was, it was such a mom moment, you know? It was a very. Yeah, he's lucky he just got slapped. <laughs> she had the mom anger there. Yes. Yeah, I don't know the answer to your question, but you're right. Even when they just... talk about, like, when she was telling Curtis about her connection to yep. that guy, she played it perfectly. Yep. It wasn't too much. It wasn't too little. It was, listen. I'm the one that killed him. Yeah. Yep. Was it last week is when she talked to Sonny and had yes. a breakdown? Yep. yep. That was good, too. Mm-hmm. We talked about that last week. Right. Yeah. It was just, she's perfect. I feel like she knows her character because she is her character at this point. Yeah. So she, there's no wrong way to play it. No. But I just love her. <laughs> That's kind of why that was just written. Because <laughs> she, she had just a, wanted to say, I love you. But she had just, a, it was a great week of Laura. Yeah. You know, because they had kind of been doing the same thing where they were writing not like Laura. Yes. And this week, she was Laura. Mm-hmm. Then coming home. Go ahead. I'm going to let you handle all that. Nope. I want to see where you want to start. <laughs> yeah, he's home. I have an issue with the fact that he said that his emotional support animal is going to need an emotional support animal. You're mocking a very real, I, I am thankful that they say support animal and not service animal because that is correct. Mm-hmm. However, you're mocking a real, and I could just go on an entire tangent about how I thought of you the moment he said that, and I'm sure all of our listeners did too, because I thought, Shannon is not happy right now. They haven't mentioned him in how long, Yep, or her, in how long, and now you say it in this, ugh. Yep. I said it's doing a huge disservice to actually, to people who actually need it. You right. know, it's, ugh. I even used the red-faced swearing Ooh. emoji. Wow. You were really That's mad. how mad I was. And emotional support animal. Quite possibly should have been at the hospital. Perhaps. Don't know. But just was not happy about that at all. Yeah, that's really all I had to get off my chest there. Okay. Yeah, I don't know anything. I mean, they talked about the wedding is going to be different than what they originally said. Yeah. And it was cute that they had little things drawn up. Right. Violet. And exactly. And I liked seeing him and Peter joking around. Peter's like, am I still invited? Right. <laughs> like, that was cute. It was cute. But, but it, it was pretty uneventful. Yes. Carly and Taggart. Loved it. I loved it, too, because she's like, dude, what are you doing? Like, you're messing up this whole thing. (laughs) She basically said what we've been saying for weeks. Why are you out and about all the time? No, you can't go kill Cyrus. I mean, we love seeing him. Don't get us wrong. We love seeing him. Definitely. But. Can't we just see him in the basement of Kate's house working out without a shirt on? That would be fine. He's keeping himself in shape so when he can go after Cyrus... He's all just, like, well. all in. Well, and then, I don't like that they're using Trina as bait. I get it. I mean, it's a pretty genius plan. But I think that it's going to backfire. I think that, I mean, Sonny knows. I feel like they're going to. And and Trina do go to them. Right. And I feel like they're smart enough, especially since they always have bodyguards around them, that eventually they're going to notice someone is following them. And yeah. it's all going to make sense. They're not little kids. They're pretty smart. Yeah. So. But it is a I just really like, yeah, but I just really like that scene because. Right. Carly told him off and then she went to Sunny and was like, look, we have a problem. Your yep. man will not stay hidden. And yep. it's really getting on my nerves. Yep. That's what's not in your thing. Her telling them about Nell being. Oh, yeah. 
I don't understand why it's as big of a deal as they're making it. I, I just don't. I'm sorry. Okay, mm-hmm. I love Jason. But when he said, wow, I didn't see that coming, it was the <laughs> worst. And why did they write that line? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure that he gave it his all, but he's just like, why am I saying this? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it was so flat and... Yeah. That you was know, funny. A simple what would have been great. Yeah. Or even the look on his face or something, but... Exactly. He's a good enough actor. He can say a lot without saying anything, yep. especially because he does stand there with no emotion so often. Right. Any reaction in his face tells you exactly what he's thinking. He yep. did not need to say that line. That was funny. Yeah. I don't know. But I don't get why they're making Nell being Nina's daughter, which I don't think is actually what's going to happen. But anyway, why that's such a big deal. And then Jack struggled with he was going to tell her. They did that flippy floppy screen thing that's annoying where she's like, no, he won't tell her. And then, oh, I think I have something to tell you. It was ridiculous. And then Nina laid it out there and was like, yeah, sometimes the truth isn't worth telling. So I don't know. I don't know. I was happy that Carly did say that Jack's new. Yes. And Sonny wasn't as mad as he could have been no. about it. He was more concerned of yes. Jax isn't going to keep his mouth shut. Yes. So, I don't know. They just... Oh, and then they told her about Julian being involved. And she was all shocked about it. I didn't see that coming. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> well, I didn't see that line. coming. <laughs> no, but I thought that that was good, too. Was So, I did have a couple notes Go about ahead. just Carly. Oh, okay. Um, typically background checks come before people start working. Yes. Before we schedule shifts. Yes. Not, I'm going to do that next week. Uh Yeah. Because, you know, if they're a criminal that, you know, possibly stole from their employer in the past, you kind of want to know that before you let them behind the bar. Right. Just throwing that out there. And at first I said on Monday that she was wearing my favorite shirt. And I said, but I don't think it's actually the cardigan. I think I'm thinking of just another blue to gray ombre, ombre sweater. And it is. So she was wearing, it was a solid. Okay. The sweater was blue to like beige or gray or whatever. Yeah. But then remember last year? Yes, I really like that one. Yeah. So Laura Wright just loves blue to gray ombre. I am with her. And then my last Carly thing was Carly having to talk to Avery about her necklace because she forgot that it was, that's a true thing. Oh, it is. How many times, mom, where is this? Remember, honey, we had to take it to the store. I don't know how long it's going to take. Yes. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I don't know why she didn't just buy her another necklace, though. That looks very similar because you're never going to give that back. So hand the girl a new necklace and she'll forget about it. The only other thing that I had was Britt talking to Lucas. Yes. And I literally wrote, just effing tell him. Because she was so all over the place. And Britt's not like that. No. If she has something to say, she says it. Yeah. But maybe she doesn't want to hurt Lucas. So she's just going to bring it up in the most ridiculous manner. Right. So he gets to that conclusion himself. I don't know. He's not going to go. I really to, don't know. He's not going to go to Brad. If her idea is, I'm going to give you enough information to make you go back to Brad and ask him. He's not. Right. So just tell him. Yeah. This is a very angry Lucas. Mm-hmm. But he's always very angry. Well, yeah. But I'm just saying. He's finally showing the emotion that they should have had him showing months ago before he just up and disappeared. Right. Well, he had to go work on that. Well, I'm glad he didn't work on it too much, because if he would have come back all forgiving, I would have been, no. Oh, no. 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 So, but that's it. That's that's the end of my news. That's all that I have. I can see how this can work. Yeah. It it kept our flow going. It was so hard not to jump to the next It was. It was really hard. We may have a pattern of doing that. But, yeah. So, oh, I guess that doesn't really give a good segue. Do-do-do. Reality check. I got a pedicure this week. Ooh, Told my family I had an appointment. Went and got a pedicure. <laughs> I can't do pedicures. I can't stand people oh, touching my feet. I love them. And she was the nicest. She was so sweet. It was a new girl, new lady. I was going to get a facial because a friend of mine, I know another Amanda, she turned me on to this masseuse who did 90-minute massages and facials for 60 bucks. Wow. And they were amazing. But she did it out of her home. And now because of corona, she doesn't anymore. So I haven't. And I... I'm not someone that used to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I just started on my birthday in 2019. I was like, you know what? $60 a month. Right. I know that it's not a lot of money, but I'm like, I need to do that for me. Yes. And I loved it. And now I haven't had one in nine months. And so I was going to get a facial. And as I was looking at the girl's services, she does like a 60-minute pedicure and leg massage. I was like, you know what? (laughs) Just throw that in there. And my toes are covered right now, but they're really cute purple. Aw. 
my son and I went to visit another college last Monday, and it was really nice because a girl that I worked with at McDonald's, and I mean, we were like super, super close, and then life happens. She mm-hmm. lives three minutes away from the campus, and I haven't seen her seriously in over 10 years. Oh, wow. And so, but we weren't able to really hang out, but I was able to stop by for like five, 10 minutes, and we stood on her porch and talked real quick, but she has a immune oh. issues, so couldn't really... And it was cold and starting to snow. Right. But it was really nice. I Facebook has its perks. It does. You know, so that's mm-hmm. nice. Very nice. What about you? It was birthday week for Miss Madeline. Is your it's, tree up now? Uh, my tree is up. It was up the weekend before Thanksgiving because that's all that she wanted was the tree up. So I went ahead and did that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was up too late. Now my throat's all scratchy today. Let's see. So she was at her dad's house for Thanksgiving weekend. And had a party there and got a bunch of stuff. And then Tuesday, she got Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast because that's what she wanted. And then got presents and we did Oakmont cupcakes, which are super Mm, delicious because that was her request. And she got her presents from me and the girls on Tuesday. And then did Matt get to make it? Matt was at the party at their dad's house, but they forgot to tell him that they were celebrating. So he didn't have a present. So he didn't come on Tuesday. But then we had a party with my family yesterday, and Matt stopped by for that. And I felt so bad when you said that last week. Yeah, like how do you forget? And it's not like he doesn't live there, like you said. He does. I'm sorry. I'm judgy about that. No, no, I am judgy because you know, boys like they they just don't pay attention. Twenty twenty two year old boys do not pay attention. But he tries really hard to be a good big brother, and it's hard enough. He's twenty two, and she's eight. So. They're not the closest, but he loves her so much, and he tries to be a good big brother. So he was really sad that he didn't have a present for her last weekend because it seemed like he didn't care to get one. Right. Not that he didn't know, and it was an honest mistake. So I don't know how that wasn't communicated to him, but whatever. So yesterday he came, and um, he had stopped and got her a present and stuff. And so he walked in the door, and she was like, Matt, and like got up and ran over and gave him a big hug. And then my nephew is into skateboarding and has been teaching her how to skateboard. And so he gave her one of his old skateboards. And she opened up the bag and she looked at him and she went, seriously? And you could tell, like, she had tears in her eyes. She was so excited. And I was like, you're so cute. So it was a good birthday. And we got her the new American Girl doll, the girls and I, because that was her thing. She's at that age that she's obsessed with American Girl. So... She made out with the, her three parties and all her stuff and whatever, but awesome. I don't know. I can't believe she's eight, but it was a good. I know. Yeah, like, I know. I know I say it every time I talk about their birthdays, but I really don't know how she's eight, but I don't know. She's still a good kid, so I'm happy. So That's that. You have good girls. I know. I and do. Matt, too. Matt, but yes. I know the girls no, more than I No, I am Matt. very blessed. All of my kids are decent human beings, but it's just different whenever right. they're little and they're yes. still, like this week she was super excited. Um, we've talked about kids' books before. And I said, I think Majid Christmas is like the favorite book yeah. of mine or whatever. And she knows the story. My mom had found the book. She had read it to me. She kept the book. You can't find it like anywhere. It's on that thrift books for like hundreds of dollars. Right. And whatever. So we have it. And Madeline has it like memorized. So she read it this week to her class over Zoom. And her teacher was like, that's a really cute book. I'll have to get that. And she was so proud to be like, nope, you can't find it anywhere. It is like this special thing for me and my mommy. And it was just so cute. Like That is sweet. Those are the things that bring her joy. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Those are the things that should be bringing us joy. I mean, it's been a hard year. It has. It has. And not that the kids don't appreciate everything, but as you get older, you kind of expect bigger presents. And so it's nice to see... That she's still just as excited over the four dollar slime as she is the hundred dollar American girl. Right. She has no concept of Exactly. It's just I like this being... and you bought it. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and just didn't say to my nephew, well, this is a used skateboard. It was like, right. Are you serious? I can have this. Right. And so And it probably means more because it was his. Exactly. So So yeah, my baby's eight. It makes me sad, but that's that. I mean Yeah, I'm like, I don't think I really did <laughs> I started a five day juice cleanse yesterday and am stopping. Because oh, I know that there's like a quote detox period, but I've done cleanses before. This not is like this. not mm. 
not good. I'm not even going to say the company because I'm 100% sure that it's not the company. Right. It's right. just, it's not the right fit for me. So then that happens. Yep. Yeah, oh, and I know we are. We are super boring. I'm done with I, my Christmas shopping. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Good job. I, oh, and my carpet's in. Remember we bought carpet? All oh. the carpet's in. Yay. Good job. So. Uh, I saw your picture of your tree up. It was very pretty. Thank you. Very pretty. Yeah. I mean, I feel like this is most parents' reality in December. It's all about getting the stuff done and trying to enjoy the little moments, but it's not anything exciting. Like, yeah. I don't know either. <laughs> this is my excitement. The kids are my excitement. Yes. That makes me happy to say so that's good so join us on thursday as we talk Yay. about stone Just something else that makes me happy yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be awesome sauce but i'm i'm really excited i can't wait so. to hear your whole take on it so we'll get there okay so have a good week and we'll meet you at the pier bye bye if you enjoyed today's show we invite you to go to pier54podcast.com to subscribe on your favorite platform don't forget to leave us a review And you can also follow us on many social media channels. Just search for Pure 54 Podcast. Also, we are not perfect. So if there is something that we missed or messed up, just let us know by emailing us at pure54podcast at gmail.com. 